Hello, beautiful souls. This is going to drop on tomorrow, Tuesday, but hey, happy Monday. <laughs> it's 11, 11 on the clock. Thank you for joining me. This is going to be the second showcase of the Sophia Dragon Tribe Ascendant Masters Divine Feminine Hathor. Now, this series started on, let me get my date straight, Sunday, 818. It was my introductory to this. And then um, 819 in the morning, Isis video dropped. Please check that out. She's super excited and stoked. If you feel a connection, a draw to Isis, please, please consider an activation. Um, if you have had a QET session, then schedule the activation is easy peasy. There's three different levels. She will actually let my higher self know. She will actually just tell me <laughs> uh, based on your higher self and your soul readiness on which level you can start with. Um, QET is required no matter what. Now, tomorrow, 820 will be Hathor. Super powerful. 821 will be Green Tara. 822, Mother Mary. 823, the one and only Magdalene. 824, Kuan Yin. And wrapping things up. For the Sevilla Dragon Tribe, my grand on 825, White Buffalo Catwoman. Super exciting, super exciting. I'm really enjoying it. Um, like I said in one of my previous videos, most of the information about these divine feminines originally came to me by way of the Sophia Code. I have no affiliation with the Sophia Code. I'm not trying to take any credit for the Sophia Code. That is all Kaya Ra, and I give her all the credit. Since I was introduced to that level of information and then went on through my own QET and had my own activations, um, the, the relationship that I've developed one-on-one -on -one with these divine feminines, it's just beautiful. And I really do want it for other people. Um, they have very uh, focused, benevolent, loving, nurturing, compassionate, but strong guidance. And I think that most of us could benefit from that. I know I did. I was lacking that in my life. And uh, and it's been received very well by those that have had the activations. There's been a, with their increase in frequency from them doing their own shadow work, and then um, the collective consciousness increase in frequency, the messages are coming through really hot and heavy. And they're resonating on a whole nother level. So I definitely invite you to take this journey with us and get to know your amazing Sophia Dragon Tribe, Divine Feminine Ascendant Masters. So we will cover Hathor today. I'm going to read a small piece of Key Code 2, which is her section in the Sophia Code. She is known as She of a Thousand Voices. True intimacy leads to joy. In the covenant of the Sophia Code, joy is an essential quality of your divine inheritance. Did you ever think that? Did you ever think growing up that it was my birthright to have bliss and joy? That never crossed my mind. It really didn't. And it's a shame that we grow up that way. I am here to guide you in how your body is the ultimate vehicle for communing with electro ecstatic bliss with your multidimensional self. I know the first time I read that, uh, it went way over my head. <laughs> uh, she had me at joy. She lost me after that. Now I've grown. My soul is expanded. I've done a considerable, considerable amount of shadow work since the first time I read that passage. And I think that's fair to say a lot of us have, right? And so I do welcome you to revisit some things that maybe were, they were catalysts for you in the beginning to put you on the right path. But if you go back and you revisit them now, it may have a deeper level of meaning and resonance within your being. Okay. Hathor. And the Hathors as a group, legacy of love on earth. The Hathor star nation speaks. We are a collective voice of initiates that ascended with Hathor during a legendary golden age in Egypt. 
<clears throat> Pathor, she of a thousand voices, a divine feminine Christ teacher for activating your voice to speak in the many tongues of Sophia's Holy Spirit. We amplify Hathor's transmissions as an accompanying congregation of angelic beings that sing in harmonic frequency with her teaching embodiment. If you've ever seen, um, there's a lot of different images of the Hathors, but one, it's pretty um, popular, I guess. And there's Hathor in the front and in the back. There are the Hathors, and it's like reminiscent of the gospel choir. Uh, you know, they're they're singing in harmony to elevate the frequency and the vibration of the message. And so that's how I think about it. When you receive Hathor's initiations, you may hear our voices singing with a thousand rustling wings and eyes that tone as tongues with spinning wheels of light. For we ascend it to become orphan and angels and the highest order in service to the Shekinah light of Mother Sophia. Yes. We represent Hathor's ability to initiate the prophet within you for the fulfillment of a great commission, just like we did for Ezekiel. You can reference Ezekiel 1 through 3.3. Mother Mary speaks. In my human lifetime, I was an ordained oracle and high priestess of Hathor's lineage. As an honored council member of the Hathor Star Nation, Hathor's teachings transmission reveals how to use your voice as an omniscient creator of quantum reality by activating your throat chakra as an alchemical technology of sound vibration. Now, I'm going to pause there. We now know the entire universe, every universe, is about frequency and vibration. That's how anything gets done. Frequency and vibration. So to have it come through that you just need to work on activating and using your sound, your frequency, your vibration in a benevolent manifesting way. I hope that's empowering. I hope that that gets you motivated to speak your truth. Hathor invited Mary to share with you several interrelated topics that highlight the sovereign creative power of your throat chakra for affecting manifestation. As in all mystery, mystery school teachings, the full embodiment of a teaching's empowerment may only be actualized through divine love. What does that mean? That means you can't just read the words and not have it come through the emotion, the feeling, the vibration of the love from your heart chakra. This is a all encompassing, all embodying effect. <clears throat> I'll read that again. As in all mystery school teachings, a full embodiment of a teaching's empowerment may only be actualized through divine love. May the union of your vision and voice be blessed and consecrated for the highest good of all as you create a new reality through the power of your word. Now, there's a lot of folks that, that speak words, but they don't have the true intention behind those words and it's felt right if you've ever had somebody just giving you a load of crap basically you can tell that there's not an actual feeling behind what they're delivering to you in the form of their words their words mean something but their intentions are robbing the meaning of the word words have power the power of every syllable defines a manifestation. Mary, my spiritual training included mastering the high art of manifestation. Communication is a paramount skill in the art of manifestation. And our physical expression of communication is experienced through the interface of language. 
The languages of these mystical lineages we're developing during golden ages of humanity's clear connection to source creator. So the languages develop with the connection of source. There are multiple, multiple languages. All languages are known through source creator. They are developed through source creator. Whew. The languages of these mystical lineages were developed during the golden ages of humanity's clear connection to the source. This was inherently allowed for the creation of highly complex scripts that reflected a more accurate vocabulary of our multidimensional quantum universe. I, Mary, excelled at golden age language with an eloquent mastery that accurately conveyed and empowered my divine transmission. Within every present moment, you have the power to speak those words that project your heaven on earth reality into form. I'm going to say that one more time. Within every present moment, you have the power to speak those words that project your heaven on earth reality into form. Allowing your higher self to guide your speech incrementally aligns you with prosperity consciousness. The voice of your higher self will only speak words which generate a continuous flow of abundance, supporting you to live in your full authentic expression. When we align to the divine, when we align and combine our full embodiment with our higher self, the tone, the delivery, the frequency, the words are of a different caliber. They're of a different capacity. You have elevated your speech. It doesn't come from an egoic mind. It doesn't come from a place of lack. You speak words into power. You breathe life into them. And when you are aligned with your higher self and you speak from that place of neutrality, but benevolence, manifesting your highest and best timeline is just a matter of that easy. Mind-blowing, right? <clears throat> Tell the story every day, word for word, about your successful legacy of love. I invite you to witness how all the creation will then imprint itself upon each syllable of your heart's desire. Spinning at the front and back of your neck, the throat chakra rotates as two wheels of light that connect in a funnel point in the center of your larynx. As a subtle organ structure from your higher self light, the metaphysical properties of the chakra interface with the an anatomy of your throat, which governs speech. The throat chakra is responsible for the physical health of your tongue, your mouth, your jaw, and your larynx as well as spiritual health of your communication, authentic expression, and creative willpower. Now, I know a lot of light workers who have had many issues with their thyroid, with vocal cord nodules, with a, a weak voice, a voice that gives out, um, all sorts of problems chronic sore throats, um, thyroid disease where they are requiring medication and whatnot. I just recently had a soul family member who in 97, her th the thyroid was removed, total thyroidectomy and had been on medication ever since then. Um, her QET session was maybe two months ago. And then in a Oracle card reading, it came through her energy signature that it was advised that she have an ISIS activation. So she did the ISIS activation and with our ascendant master activations, they always ask, is there a physical ailment that you want us to target healing to? And her request was to restore the thyroid function 
in her body, even though she does not have a thyroid. And we made the request and it was done. And two days, I believe, maybe three, she was guided by her higher self to wean off of her medication and she no longer requires her medication and it has been restored through faith and through energy and through healing of that area. And so it's less about the organ and more about how the energy affected the organ. <clears throat> and so I want you to definitely, I am not giving medical advice. I'm just telling you a story of what has happened and miracles happen every day. Hathor, AKA Het Hiru. That, so it's H E T dash H E R U also known as the solar cow goddess, which is kind of funny associated with sky and fertility. Het Hiru means from the house of Horus. And it became accepted that Hathor is the divine consort of Horus. This gives Hathor cosmic energy and a link to the stars, star beings and star potential. It is believed that she is the daughter of sun god Ra and therefore carries the infinite light of the sun, the great central sun. As Hathor is considered the cow goddess, she is inextricably associated with fertility, motherhood, and producing the nourishment of milk. Hathor is a wonderful goddess figure to call on if you're wanting to work with your mother's ancestry, get pregnant, or nurture your family. Perhaps you want to nurture a project that you've given birth to. Hathor can help you reclaim your sexual power, support fertility and reproduction, strengthen the connection to the cosmos, and align your voice to your higher self. The Hathors are light beings assigned to those working with the light and activating the energy upon the earth. Hathors are dedicated to the evolution of a human soul. Working with the Hathors helps align our vision and they can help us have laser focus and remember why we ever felt drawn to developing spirituality in the first place. Hathors help support spiritual evolution. They help us welcome more light into our being. And that's because the more light that we welcome in from the great central sun, from the moon, the authentic moon, the more of our dormant crystalline DNA gets activated. And so it's very beneficial. Hathors allow you to bathe in pure light and upgrade to your energetic frequency and brings you guidance on the path ahead. So once I developed this information, which was uh, derived from some from the Sophia Code and some from Kyle's gray book on the Ascendant Masters, Hathor came with a message <laughs> and this is it. Channeled message direct from Hathor. I'm happy you are sharing some of our abilities with the world. I'd like to offer to work with you and Aurelia, which is one of my soul sisters, on developing some throat chakra activations. Additionally, in this moment, the frequency of the collective is high enough to reach for truth, embody truth, and share truth. But it is many that I see struggling with sharing of truth. My intention is for more sovereign light beings to stand in their power and share their truth with love and confidence. Blessings upon blessings. Hathor. She's powerful. And it is a group of angelic beings that work with you um, when you want to work with the Hathors. And so it's a, it's a message from a collective voice. Um, the energy is very welcoming and very nurturing. Um, it was not overpowering. I did not feel overpowered in any way, um, but they definitely made their pre presence known. And so, yeah, I think that for me, I know I read the Hathors a couple of times, but really reading it um, the last couple of days, I couldn't help but think about all the 
the light beings in my life that struggle with speaking their truth. And that's, that comes from a, it comes from a collective um, bias in our world. They predominantly people say that they want the truth, but then when the truth starts to come and it's ugly and it's gut wrenching, then they turn away from the truth because it's uncomfortable not realizing that it's in those moments that our soul grows, that you can choose love, forgiveness, and gratitude for that moment, for that event, for the truth, and then move on. It is not really for us to be assigning guilt, shame, blame, having fear over something. Those are very low vibration and low frequency thoughts, feelings, and emotions which really keep you stuck in a place of not growing, which is exactly where the controllers that were had us for such a long time. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you have some throat anatomy issues and you feel like maybe this is something that you haven't tried, you haven't thought of, I do ask, what do you have to lose? I'm not going to give you a prescription. I'm not going to recommend surgery. I'm only going to tap into your energy signature and the, the ascendant masters that want to and can assist in clearing out the issues and then let it integrate. So in the grand scheme of healthcare, it is very benign and really in a position where you take your power back. So you decide what you want to do and you decide what you want to engage with. And let the results speak for themselves. There have been some that have entered into some healing and they thought exactly that. What do I have to lose? So there was hope, but there wasn't a whole lot of faith. There's a big difference there. If you're hopeful that a cure will come along, hope inadvertently implies a lack of faith. You're saying, you know, like maybe some good deed will come through, but I'm doubtful. Instead, I invite you to use the power of your words and breathe confidence and faith into what you really want to manifest in your life. If you're looking for things to change positively, then it, the words that you use in your life should change positively. And I want you to really consciously think about what you're saying. Have conversations in the mirror. Look at what your face looks like whenever you talk to people. Like you can actually talk to people on the phone or whatever. And look at what your body language is doing. Watch yourself in the mirror and see what you're putting out there. We are energy. We are energy bodies. When our energy is stuck, when our energy is blocked and distorted, it manifests in physical ailments. This is true. This is proven. Unblocking, clearing out the negative energy allows for the free flow of positive source light energy to come through our being and help us heal. That's how we self-heal. That's how it works. There really isn't a magic wand. It's, it's the power within you to use what you were given, a birthright, for the greater good, including yourself. So if this has piqued your interest and you have questions, please visit www.violetlotusenergy.com and check out our services. If you haven't had a QET session, that'll be your first step. But then the activations are available to you. And it may not be ISIS. It may not be the Pleiadians and Maropa. It may be Maggie. I don't know. If it's something, if it's an ascendant master that you're really drawn to, just send me a message and let me know what it is that you're looking for to heal. And we will work through and develop a session for you. So you guys have a great day and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.